Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Life Point Pentecostal Church, where Christ is worshiped, the word is preached, and people are loved. Amen. Everybody's feeling the fellowship and the love this morning. We're just going to get started with our announcements today. Um, everybody say Monday night. We have Igniting the Flame Ladies Bible Study in the church foyer. Everybody say 630. 630. That is hosted by Sister Jennifer Cole. If you'd be interested in checking that out. Everybody, we're just going to get started with these announcements this morning, okay? Um, if you would like to see Sister Cole this morning or about that, you can go ahead and do that. Regular a schedule as follows. Tuesday night prayer, Wednesday Bible study. Uh, we might be uh, breaking off on our group, our life groups, oh, I think. Yeah. Are we? I don't know. I don't know. We don't know yet. We will let you know. It'll be a surprise for this <laughs> Wednesday if we're breaking off or not. Thursday night, Lifeline at 6 p.m. downstairs in the Fellowship Center. Everybody say Friday night. Friday. Everybody say youth. <laughs> um, we're going to be having a youth event at the bowling alley at 7 p.m. this Friday. Um, so any youth, please come. Please invite somebody. We would be happy to have you. Um, the bowling alley is re are reserved under John if you guys get there before us. And that's at 7 p.m. Amen. That'll be fun. All right, cafe is open this morning. That will be after the altar call today. Um, everybody say ladies retreat. Ladies retreat is coming up. It is June 1st to 3rd, and that's in Hope, BC. If you would like to come, uh, please see Sister Kim Carlson for more information. Um, I know the ladies are always blessed when they go, and they have such an awesome time. So please feel free to talk to her about that more. Everybody, let's stand this morning. Um, we're going to give in our tithes and offerings this morning. Don't forget that we can give in e-transfer, and that info is up on the screen for you this morning. All right, let's pray this morning. In Jesus' name, God, we give you thanks that we get to come into your house this morning, and we just worship you today. We thank you today. God, we open up our hearts to you this morning, God, and we want to move your heart today. Jesus, with our worship, with our praise, we're going to lift you up with our voices. We're going to lift up our hands in honor to you this morning, to give all glory to you today, God. I'm going to make that up in my mind, God. That's what I'm going to do, because nobody, God, can worship you for me in my place, God. And I want to worship you with all that I have today. I pray that you would bless this service and bless our time in your presence this morning. In Jesus' name. Give him a hand clap of praise today. We thank you, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just lift him up to you. Just lift your hands and just worship the Lord. He's here today. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, precious Lord.
Give my hand clap of praise this morning in the house. He's worthy to be praised. Glory to God. He's so good. Why don't you shake your neighbor's hand and dismiss the kids to go down to kids' life this morning? I know they're going to have a great time. Greet somebody this morning. Love on somebody this morning. beautiful presence of the Lord this morning in God's house. I'm so glad everybody's here today. Amen. Those joining us online, welcome this morning to an opportunity, another opportunity to get closer to Jesus Christ, to get closer to our God. In a relationship of intimacy, there are levels of, of proximity or nearness to your personal space and then to your heart. If you remember the first time, maybe somebody that you had feelings for that you reached out and you touched their hand and it was electric. Something happened. Oh. After 16 years of marriage, it's still electric. Woo. I love my wife. When you come to church and you lift your hands to Jesus Christ, that lightning bolt from heaven comes down and you still get the goosebumps. You still get the feels of what it feels like to be in love with Jesus Christ. It just keeps getting better and better and better and better as the days go by. And I feel God in the house. You know, I'm confident to preach God's word when I feel his presence. I'm confident to step out into the spirit and let God do what God wants to do when I feel his presence. And in this atmosphere, I know anything can happen. I want to just ease into what I have to preach today uh, with a reminder that uh, this will be the last time that I, I put this reminder out there. We're halfway through the year now. We're getting into June and, and all of that coming up. Summertime is here. But in the, in the outset of 2023, I talked about holy habits. How many people remember that? Holy habits. I was talking about our daily devotions and praying and reading our Bibles and, and maybe putting things in such a way that reminds you to spend time with God. Or And just last week, I talked about meeting needs in our community and uh, serving the least of these. And so I just wanted to give you a holy uh, a habit reminder this morning that we can still get closer to God in 2023, developing holy habits that bring us closer to God and closer to His mission, the Great Co-Mission. I want to go to the book of Luke today, chapter 5. If you got your Bible, turn there with me today. As we're turning there, I'm going to read the first five verses in the book of Luke, chapter 5. It's a wonderful story of Jesus calling his disciples. And if you listen closely today, God's calling you to be a disciple. 
Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, and the Bible says, It came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gesenaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. That means they were finished for the evening putting away their nets because they got skunked. They had caught nothing. He entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's or Peter's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. And that ship was a place of, of failure. And I've noticed sometimes out of failure, Jesus teaches his best lessons. And Peter was about to find out. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught or for a catch. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Everybody say nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, at thy word, I will let down the net. Help me pray this morning. Lord, at your word, we will do your will. At thy word, we will trust your will for our lives. At thy word, God, even when things are dark, and we are dismayed and discouraged, God. We will trust you and we will take you at thy word. And everybody said in Jesus' name, give God a hand clap of praise today. <laughs> Help me preach this morning. A catch-22 is an impossible situation where you are prevented from doing one thing until you have done another. It's like being stuck between a rock and a hard place. And An example would be like shoveling your vehicle out of the driveway, but you don't have a shovel. And you can't go anywhere to get one to get a shovel to shovel yourself out. I'm so glad it's springtime. <laughs> Amen. So Peter, James, and John were in a bit of a catch-22. They were tired, discouraged, and no doubt frustrated from another night of toiling 10 to 12 hours, throwing out their nets, pulling them back into the boat until their arms felt like they were going to fall off and their backs were about to break. Defeated, they began to row back to the shore and then they saw Jesus. I don't know about you, but that sounds like my life before I saw Jesus. Tired, broken, hurting, discouraged. And then the sun rose and as the day was breaking, like the day star arising in my heart, my darkness was over when I saw Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And as Jesus was preaching and the people were pressing, that's when Jesus climbed into Peter's boat. Aren't you glad that Jesus got into your boat today? Come on, he gets into your boat and he gets into your life. He gets into your face. Jesus turned to Peter, who by now is being held hostage, forced to listen to Jesus' words in his own boat. And as a sinner who just wants to go home and go to sleep, but this rabbi, this teacher, when he's finished the altar call, he turns to Peter and he says, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught or a catch. Now here's the catch. Peter was caught between the rock and a hard place. It was a catch-22. It was now the wrong time of the day. Peter knew that. He was an experienced fisherman. He just spent all night fishing and caught nothing but failure. His nets are clean and folded. He's ready to go home. But shaking his head, he looks at Jesus and he says, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing, but nevertheless, at thy word, at thy word, I will let down the nets. He took Jesus at his word. James and John, probably shrugging, prepared the net, knowing as well that fish can only be caught at night. With nets like ours and a small boat like we have, we've already tried all night and nothing, and now it's day and we're exhausted. The fish are gone. They are all at the bottom. 
But that's when God took the impossible and turned it into a miracle. Just then the net was filled with fish and their hearts were filled with faith. Their net was filled with fish and their hearts were filled with faith. And Peter said, at thy word, I will let down the net. When they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. You see, this is an example that in ministry we should work together. Someone say amen. Come on, when you're having so much revival, you can't take it all in. You need help in the ministry, and we should work together. Churches should work together. Come on, people in the church should work together. You see, they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. That's a catch. That's revival. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the catch of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all. And followed him. There was a supernatural manifestation. God had given them a sign that they should leave everything that was material, everything that was from this earthly realm, this terra firma, and follow after Jesus, who was God manifest in the flesh. They had been absolutely uh, certain that that was the best thing they could do with their lives. And I don't know about you, but serving Jesus Christ has been the best thing that I've ever done with my life. And I forsook all and, and everything that I had plans for my life to become, I laid it all at his feet. You see, only God can turn a catch-22 into a miracle. That's when God takes the impossible and turns it into the miraculous. When things seem bleak, if we can just trust God and take him at his word, if we can say like Peter did, that at thy word... I'll do what you say in your word, in my life, not what life's telling me, but what God's telling me. Can I get an amen? Come on, there's times in your life that what life is telling you and what God is telling you are going to be two different things. And I'm telling somebody in the Holy Ghost today, you got to take God at his word. Come on, trust what God's saying about your life. If we can find the courage to take God at his word then we will receive such a blessing that we won't be able to contain it. Hallelujah. And God will make us a fisher of men. Meaning that God's will and God's blessing and revival will become a lifestyle. Revival will become a lifestyle. Clap your hands unto the Lord this morning if you want revival to reciprocate in your life. New life should reciprocate in your walk with God. We should be constantly dying out the things that are not profitable, things that we should put down at the feet of Jesus to leave for that, for that uh, forsaking all and following him, and God will bring new life time and again into that process of reciprocating revival in your life. Some things have to pass away if all things are going to become new. Some things have to die in our lives if new life is to take its place. And so some of our old ways of living may have to die. We may have to repent of those things to make way for something new. Something better can then take its place. Hallelujah. I know some of you know what I'm preaching about today. Some of our old ways of thinking, if the way we were thinking before is not biblical, we need to die out to some of man's traditions or unfruitful or any non-beneficial ways of thinking so then we can have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, help me preach right here. When revival becomes a lifestyle, when revival becomes a lifestyle, then encouragement becomes your expectation. When revival is your lifestyle, you don't see problems as something that stops you. You see problems as something that propels you. When revival becomes your lifestyle, reciprocation occurs, new life occurs, new blessings occur. It's blessing on blessing. And before you know it, 
packed down, shaken, overflowing. Our men pressing into your bosom. When revival becomes your lifestyle. you got to have faith. Even at dark times in your life when you struggle, that God's blessing and his promises are on the way. You say fish stay at the bottom during the day. To reduce the amount of light that shines in their eyes, they must dive deeper or find shade. And the fishermen were toiling all night because it was the only time that the fish would come up near the surface. During the day, they couldn't fish deep enough to catch anything. And somebody needs to hear this today. Sometimes you go through dark times in your walk with God so God's blessings can surface in your life. Sometimes we go through things. Dark times and we struggle. You may feel like you've toiled all night. That's just so God's blessings can surface in your life. Maybe a trial in your life or a dark time that you endure is just the deep calling unto the deep of the next miracle blessing to come forth. You just have to wait when the day breaks. Hallelujah. You just have to hold on until morning. Come on. Hold on this morning until you see Jesus in your circumstance. Jesus just needs to get into your boat. But church, will you take him at his word? Will you take him at his word? There's something to be said about expecting blessing and the promises of God to just fall into your lap. And it's another thing to say, Lord, I'll take you at your word and I'll cast out my net. When it doesn't seem like the right situation or the right time, that takes faith. At God's word, he spoke the worlds into existence. Come on, at God's word, he made a covenant with mankind. At his word, he provided, he protected, and he corrected the people of God all according to his promises. I feel like somebody needs to hear this again this morning. And if you don't know, now you know God is a man of his word. Hallelujah. God's going to keep his word. Come on, how many know today that God still keeps his word? I rise to preach to you today that God always has and God always will be a God who keeps, who preserves, and who brings to pass His precious promises in His eternal Word. If you can believe it, somebody shout yes. Come on. God keeps His Word. Psalms 119 verses 89 through 90 says, Forever, O Lord, Thy Word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. Psalms 119, verse 160 says that God's promises endure forever. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Amen. Isaiah 55 and 11 says that God's word never returns void. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. Numbers 23 and 19 says people can let you down, but God's word will never let you down. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. He has said and he will do it. Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? God always comes through on his word. Have you found that to be true this morning? Hebrews 10.23 says, God who has promised is faithful. Somebody say, God is faithful. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Luke 11.28 says, we have to practice God's word. Jesus replied, but even more blessed. Come on, do you want more blessing this morning? Blessed are all those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Hebrews 4 and 2 says we have to have faith in his word for indeed the gospel which was preached to us as well as to them but the word which they heard did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 and 2 we have to mix our belief in God's word with faith. 
If you read the Bible, I've met many people who say, I have read the Bible. It did nothing for me. But I ask them, did you believe it was the word of God? Did you believe it was going to change your life? Did you believe when you opened that book that the author was present, that the Spirit of God was going to move upon your life, and that those words would radically change you forever? And the answer is no, because if they did, it would have profited them. Yes, God is faithful. Yes, His Word is forever established. It's forever settled in heaven. And yes, it shall come to pass, but we have to practice it. We have to have faith in the Word of God. We have to live the Word of God. We have to obey it. We have to learn it. We have to study it to show ourselves approved. Wednesday, we're entering into a three-week apostolic apologetics Bible study to answer some tough questions about the Word of God. And I want you to come on Wednesday night to be a part of that great series. But if you don't hear anything else that I say today, I need you to hear this. You need to say in your spirit today that at thy word, O God, I will do what you have said. Why? Because God keeps his word, so we have to stay in the word. Come on, somebody. When you're tempted, stay in the Word. When you're down and when you're discouraged, stay in the Word. Hallelujah. If you're doing good or if you're up to no good, come on, stay in the Word. I'm so glad that God always is faithful. I'm going to take a minute right now. Tell you this, you never waste your time cracking your Bible. If you ever listen to your Bible app and you, you listen to the Word of God when you're on the go or when you're just, just I'm telling somebody, you'll get encouraged just from listening to the Bible. There's times that I've been discouraged and I've been, I've been hurting and I've just turned to the Bible and for some reason I always just open the Bible right to something that encourages me. Then there's other times I open the Bible and it says that God destroyed 20,000 people or something. I'm like, oh no, I, that's, not the, that's not the page I want to turn to. Maybe God just want to straighten me out. I don't know. I, I turn it to, a, to an encouraging psalm or, or to amen, anything about the cross, knowing at the foot of the cross, God's going to work it out. You see, God has made us over 30,000 promises in his word. And if you want to receive his promises and walk in his blessings, you must believe and obey the holy, life-changing, living, breathing word of God. The logos, the rhema in your prayer time or in the pulpit. You have to love the word more than you love anything else in your life. I'll tell you why. You have to love the word of God more than you love the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says God has exalted his word even above his name. If it wasn't for his good word, that good word of God, we wouldn't even know the name of Jesus. Do you love the name of Jesus? Do you love his word today? There's so many treasures to uncover. There's so much revelation in in all those 30,000 promises that God has for you. You ought to take the time just to open it up. Discover those promises for yourself. But pastor, I don't know the word. Then you got to learn the word. If you can learn your ABCs, you can learn the word of God. A stands for always read your Bible. You can't learn it if you don't read it, listen to it, or learn how to study it. Somebody say amen. And B stands for believe what's in the Bible. You can't just read it, but you have to have faith in it. Reading the Bible won't do anything for you if you don't believe that it's going to save your soul. Can I get an amen in the house? Come on, C stands for correct your life according to the Bible. You can't think yourself saved. You can't just hope you're going to make it. You have to make sure you line up with the scriptures that say you're born again, that you're living a holy and victorious life in the center of God's perfect will for your life. Uh, And we can help you here at LifePoint do all those things. It's as simple as ABC. So many people make excuses about not living for God. 
They're just saying, well, I kind of want to do this and I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to just mess around. But I promise you, every moment you waste not learning the word of God, you're missing out on his perfect plan and his promises for your life. I don't want to see you miss out. I don't want to see you live beneath your privilege. As a believer on planet earth, you ought to have authority in your walk with God. You can cast out devils, heal the sick, devils will cross the street when you come walking down the sidewalk because you have authority in the word of God because you claim scripture and you take God at his word. I want to make one last point this morning. And this, this morning, I want to do something different. We're going to open the altar, and we're going to worship, and we're going to praise God. And from the front to the back, we're going to celebrate the Word of God today. It's something we take for granted. It's something that we don't always celebrate, the fact that you even have the Word of God, that you even have a Word for your life. And, and we're going to celebrate to that, that today. We're going to worship and praise our way to a closer walk with God and to a new commitment to going deeper in His Word. Come on, I feel like there's sometimes I preach simple, I preach straightforward, and I'll tell you why. Because God didn't want to make it complicated for you to get to heaven. God didn't want to make it complicated for you to live a blessed life. God doesn't want to make it complicated for us to have to try to reinvent the wheel on how to become a Christian. It's real simple. It's as simple as those ABCs. We're going to sing two or three songs, and we're going to worship God. And, and I really want everyone with us today to get out in the aisles, and we're going to worship and praise today and celebrate all of God's promises. And while we're at it, we're going to make a new commitment to learning and obeying God's word. I'll tell you why. The apostle Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word. And he obeyed Jesus this was before Simon Peter was an apostle, before he saw the miracle of the fish filling the boats. It would be easy to say yes to obey God's word after the blessing, after the miracle. But this was before the miracle of fish filling the boats. He just believed God. God gave Peter enough faith and common sense and with a measure of faith was just a mustard seed of faith to obey the words of Jesus at face value, even though he was tired. Even though he had struggled all night through a trial, through a test, I'm preaching to someone today, try again. Reach out by faith again today and say, Lord, at thy word, I will be who you want me to be. I will read and believe and obey your word. At face value, let's all stand. I want to ask the musicians to come back. And with a simple uh, sermon today, a simple response is necessary. We're going to praise and worship God and thank Him for His Word. And I'm going to open this altar. We're going to worship and praise and fill this house with God's presence and with faith today by lifting our hands, lifting our voices, lifting our hands all across the sanctuary. And we're going to bless His name and thank God for His Word. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the Word, we wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for Jesus being the Word, capital W, we would not be here. If it wasn't for those precious promises of God, I feel like today at the foot of the cross, God's got a promise for somebody that you've overlooked. There's some promises in His Word that you have yet to discover. There's things in the Bible you have not yet been exposed to. And it's my job as a man of God, it's my job as the pastor of this church to help you discover the treasure in the field of the Word of God for your blessings and for your miraculous change and, and everything that God has for you. But you got to want it. you got to have faith in this Word. And you got to obey it. There's only a few things that stop us from being who God wants us to be. There's only a few things that stop us from obeying that word. One is ignorance. If you have yet to read the word of God, I implore you today, get your nose in the book. Come on, study to show thyself approved. We're going to be doing that on Wednesday. You are welcome to study with us and help us together learn the word of God. Everybody say together. We learn together. We ask questions and we learn together. Number two. If there's sin in your life, if you're doing something in your life you know is against the Word of God and you've already learned that and you're not pleasing God, it's as easy as asking God to forgive you of that. Right now, this morning, you could say, Lord, I'm in violation of your Word. I'm in violation of your will. God, I'm living in sin, but I want to be free. 
And at thy word, I know the Bible says you're faithful and just to forgive my sins by the power of your blood and the atonement of the cross. And God, I'm getting the sin out of the way. And I want you to help me, forgive me in this area of my walk with God so that I can qualify to go forward, to go further in the promises of God. And this is the last thing I'll say. I feel like God just put this on my heart for somebody to say this. Don't let stinking old pride get in your way. Don't just be like, I'm not going to do what this preacher's saying. God, I have my own thing with you. I got my own relationship with you. That's religiosity. That is not grace and mercy that God has given all of us. Nobody here has it all figured out. Nobody here has it all together, including myself. We're all level at the foot of the cross. But our attitude ought to be more of you, Lord. More of your word. Correct me. Redirect me, God. Show me, God, what you have for me. And here it is. The blessings and the promises of God, they're in this house. And as we begin to worship, I want you to step out in the aisle. I want you to come. Maybe worship right where you are in your seat. We're all going to worship together as a church. And we're going to celebrate the word of God that at thy word, O Lord, that your will would be done in my life.